Hey everyone, welcome back to DIY Beauty on Purpose. Today I am working on two projects for you and I'm excited because these were absolutely completely free. My cousin messaged me several weeks ago and said, hey, I'm going to get rid of these um, wall decors. Do you want them before I toss them? And I said, yeah. <laughs> so here I am. I am going to turn them into some super cute farmhouse chic wall decor. The first one here is this. Um, it's meant more as a tabletop kind of frame and um, it had that stainless steel or not stainless steel, the um, galvanized pineapple in the front, which I removed using a flathead screwdriver. And then I removed the back, um, what is that called? Like whatever keeps it from falling. <laughs> I removed that using a screwdriver. I gave it a very light sand just to remove anything that may be rough and dusted it quickly there. And now I am going to give it a good one coat, actually, not two. One coat of the chalk paint from rust and the linen white. And it's going to be a pretty heavy first coat, um, but it was not full coverage, but I was okay because I do want to distress it pretty heavily. I am using my chippy brush and I get these at the hardware store and they're actually one of my favorites. All right, so now that it is fully dry, I am going to use my power sander and a 120 grit sandpaper and I'm going to distress it specifically heavier on the edges and corners as well as in the middle. Um, a little lighter in the middle, but I did distress it pretty heavily. And then now I'm just dusting it pretty well. And the goal with this is I want this to have a very feminine kind of look. So I am going to keep it pretty simple. I bought these milk jars. I got 12 of them for $10 off of Marketplace several, several months ago. I've used them in quite a bit of projects and I still have several of them. And I love them because they're so versatile. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of eyeing out where I want the jar to be. And I marked with a pencil where I'm going to drill a couple holes because I am going to kind of tie the jar to the frame. That way it looks like it's kind of floating. But um, first I'm going to hot glue a little bit on the jar to secure some jute twine that I'm going to twist around several times. And then the reason for this is one, because I love jute twine. And two, because the jute twine is what I'm going to use to secure it to the board. And that way the, the jute twine will kind of blend in um, on the jar. So I'm just going to thread the jute twine through the two little holes I drilled. And then once it, they are threaded, I am going to place the jar in it. And the reason why I'm threading it first is because it's just easier than threading it when the jar is on the board. And... I'm adding a little bit of hot glue to the back of the jar that way it's a little bit more secure, especially as I'm tying it so it stays pretty, pretty sturdy there. And I'm just going to make a simple knot in the back as tight as I can. And I should have placed this claw hook <laughs> in the back before I placed the jar, but no big deal. I just basically am holding the jar underneath and I'm just hammering it there and it worked out fine. So there you have it. That's kind of how I did it. I added some faux peonies from that I got at on Amazon and look how beautiful it looks guys. I mean, does it get any prettier and more feminine than this? I just absolutely love this style and I have these florals actually in my Amazon store and the Amazon store is linked down below in the description box, but look how beautiful. I'm just so in love with this. All right guys, so for my second project, I am going to work on this larger wall decor. Again, gifted to me or given to me by my cousin who was just not wanting it anymore. So I am going to remove the arrow. It's like a metal arrow that has in the front and it's just screwed in with these bolts in the back. So I just unfastened them and removed the arrow. And of course, you know I'm gonna keep this arrow because 
I will probably use it in another DIY. So I'll put that to the side for the future. And now I'm just going to dust it lightly. It is actually very clean, but just dusting it a little bit. Now I'm going to use some spackle. Spackle you can get at any hardware store. You can find at Walmart, Amazon, Dollar Tree. I've had this one for so long and it's lasted me through several, several projects. I'm going to fill in the two holes where the arrow was at. And I'm also going to use it because I want to add a very cute detail to the frame of this Um board frame i don't know what to call this <laughs> i am using one of my stencils this is one of the very first stencils i ever got and i've used it several times but i have to confess i don't use it as often as i should because it is beautiful and i'm going to stencil using spackle and what this will do is it will create a raised stencil so instead of just painting it i want it to be raised because i don't want it to be very noticeable i want it to be a detail on the frame and I'm going to repeat this on both corners of the frame. Now, um, the key with this is just spreading it like if you were icing cookies or cake or something like that. And um, once you have it nicely covered, you basically lift the stencil and then let it dry fully. I let this um, stencil dry overnight. So it was probably at least 12 hours. Not that you need to wait that long. I just wait. It just happened to be that long because I waited overnight. But if you could, I would wait because you want to make sure it's fully dry before you paint over it. And then what you want to do is once you're done stenciling, you want to take your stencil and just rinse it off with water. Um, I just rinsed it and really, really wiped it well and it came off. All right, so this is the next day and now the uh, spackle is fully dry. And now I'm going to give it two coats of the Linen White Chalk Paint by rust -Oleum. And I just want you to notice how beautiful, it's very subtle, but when you really look, you could tell, you can see the raised stencil and it just adds such a cute detail. I want to start doing this more and more. I did it once more on a inspired look for last that I did maybe about a month or two ago and i thought about doing it on this and i'm so glad i did because it just added such a cute feminine detail to this frame once i added the two coats i let it well once i added the first coat i let it dry then i added the second coat now this middle portion is very textured it's almost like a fabric um, I don't know how to explain it, but it's very textured, but it, I didn't mind, you know, it was fine. It painted well and it dried well and it was absolutely fine. All right. So this is several hours later after the, not several hours, it was probably about an hour after the last coat. And, um, I am now going to use probably my second favorite <laughs> stencil I ever I own. This is a French script stencil that I got on Amazon and, I, and it's actually also on my Amazon store linked down below. I have used it on furniture, I've used it on home decor, I'm using it here now and it's absolutely beautiful. The key to this stencil is that you want to, I mean you do whatever you want, but what I prefer to do it with it is I stencil it very heavy here light there i skip a few words here and there i i like it to be very spontaneous i guess or just here and there i don't know if that makes sense but what i'm doing is i am putting a little heavier coats on one on several parts lighter on others i'm like i said it just i want it to look like it's faded like this writing has faded over the years so that's what i'm doing I am using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the country gray and I'm using what it says a sponge um, stenciling brush that I got at Walmart and I'm going to do this just one coat of course and I'm going to do it all the way in the middle only.
and look how cute that looks see what I'm talking about it's like heavier in some spots lighter on the other and it just looks like it's faded like it's an old scripture kind of thing kind of look and in the parts where I had some bleed through I actually don't mind I think it, it adds to the look and I didn't mind at all I want to take a minute here and remind you that I have a new blog and it's linked down below in the description box. It's at DIYBeautyOnPurpose.com. I post monthly blogs, basically just listing my favorite things and just different things that I may not go over here on my channel. So I want to invite you to go down and check that out and um, I'd love to connect with you there as well. All right, so now that everything is fully dry, I am now using my electric sander once again, and I'm going to sand the edges. Now, you can't tell from this angle, but I'm not make, I'm not doing a lot of pressure at all. I am just letting the weight of the sander do the work. Because I don't know how heavy yet I wanted it to do it, so I just started very light here and there, and then as I started getting comfortable with knowing how how quickly the paint was pulling off. Then I started giving a little bit more muscle until I got the look that I wanted because I'd rather go little by little than having to go back and paint if I need to. Make sense? So I didn't want as heavier, as heavy as a distress that I did on the other project, but I did want it to have a nice distress. And can you see that raised stencil on the edge? I just think it looks so beautiful. All right, so I am using the same technique that I used in my previous project. I am going to pre-drill a couple of holes. These are going to be closer in distance because I'm going to be adding some florals to the middle of this frame with some floral wire. I don't know if this is floral wire, but it's just craft wire. I think that's just craft wire. And um, these florals I got in the same bundle that I got in the um oh my god the peonies is that how you call them that i used earlier um so that's the it's, it came in the same bundle i wrapped it i wrapped the stems with raffia and i'm going to show you here in a little bit how i did that but basically i just wrapped it around because i wanted it to have a more neutral tone versus having that green faux stem that you can tell that is very faux <laughs> so i just placed the floral and now i'm just going to very carefully tilt it so that i can twist the wire in the back tightly and then make sure that um it's uh I'm going to cut the excess of the wire because I don't want it to scratch the wall or anything. So I want the, whatever I rolled, the wire that I rolled or twisted in the back, I want to make sure that it's uh, as uh, flush with the frame as possible so it's not um, scratching the wall. And here's like looking back, I should have showed you this prior, but I do want to show it to you now. This is how I wrapped around the florals using the raffia so i basically just rolled it around it did take it i'm obviously put, doing it here a lot quicker because <laughs> i'm doing it in a fast motion but um it's just a basic i added a little bit of glue hot glue on the top to secure it and then wrapped it around and i actually ro uh, rolled another piece of raffia and went started from the bottom bottom up and i did that with both of them And I like doing this. I've done it before and I like doing this again because I don't like seeing that full green wire. Um, if it's going to be, if it was in a jar or like a vase, I'd be fine. But because this is just going to be so kind of like in your face with this um, wall decor, I wanted it to be covered and it just looks prettier. And that's how I did it. All right, so going back to the um, mainframe here. So I am now going to take some jute twine. This is a little thicker jute twine that I used earlier. And I'm going to make just a, a simple bow. And it may not look simple, but it is. It's just a simple bow, but I just wanted to have um, several strands so that it looks a little thicker. And so basically, I'm just going to... I looped it around several times 
and I like to make a loop and then scrunch it to the middle and then I just tie it using an extra little piece of chew twine and then I just cut the the bottom just to have the um, the tails of the bow but that's basically it I'm gonna tie it and then I'm going to secure it with hot glue and we'll be all set And there you have it. Look how beautiful this looks. I mean, I just, from where it came from, now there's nothing wrong with the original look. It was just not the look I prefer. And just this just turned out stunning. And I'm going to keep it for myself. <laughs> and I'm going to um, hopefully soon put it in my master bedroom. All right, guys, this is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this inspires you to take some decor that maybe you don't want anymore and turn it into something absolutely stunning and beautiful. If you haven't subscribed and you're new, I ask that you consider doing so. And if you are returning, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a blessed day.